This morning, it is my great privilege and honour to welcome Apostle Norm and Jess McLeod. I, I've known them for many, many years. I believe him to be one of the uh, senior leadership Maori apostles in New Zealand. And uh, I have many reasons for saying that, but I've watched what he's done um, in, the, in the last four or five years, and it's just been life transformational for people that have been part of his activist courses. His impact in our nation is huge. And Apostle Norm, I count it as a great privilege to have you at Encounter Church Auckland this morning. I'd like us to stand and let's honour him and welcome him today, please. Please be seated. Thank you, Brent. Prophet Brent Douglas and Patricia. What an incredible dynamic duo, huh? None like them on all the earth. <laughs> it's just awesome. And it's an honour to be standing in your whare and to be connected to your whakapapa because through ihu we are, but also the, the mahi we're doing, it's all one and the same at the end of the day. So... Uh, Thank you. It's an honour to stand here. It's an honour to come and serve you. And uh, finally, I have an authority, I have a power of God upon my life, but that authority, that power has to come under the authority, under the authority. Like a centurion, he said, I have authority. I'm under authority. I'm a man under, but I also have others under me. My authority only operates as long as I'm willing to use mine to serve others. So, so I come to serve you, Brent, Patricia, and Encounter. Kia ora koutou. You might be wondering why I put my snot rag up here on the ground. And uh, you're welcome to put your snot rag up, or handkerchief, sorry, up here. <laughs> why? Uh, prayer cloths, because we send prayer cloths out across the world, the nation, and uh, people with terminal diseases, stage four cancers, brain tumors, arthritis. And uh, as the cloth has gone back to them, because there's something of the presence of God that flows from the anointing of the Holy Spirit, gets into the fabric of the material. And uh, those who cannot be at the meetings, when that material touches them, it's, you know, when the, the, the woman reached out and touched the hem of Jesus' garment, it wasn't the material that healed her, it was the Spirit of God <clears throat> flowing through Jesus. And it gets into material. And it, can, it can be transferred from the material into the body and to just destroy that work of the devil. So you're welcome to pick up your handkerchief, uh, any article of clothing, well, you know, within reason, article of clothing won't go there, eh? And, uh, and just put them down here. And I don't even touch them. I just be in the presence of the Holy Spirit. So just feel free to do that now. Kia ora, sweetheart. Um, so good to have Wurumu and Lei. They have been with us for many years, 29 years ago. This fella comes up to the front of church, which we just started, walks up, and he tells me, at that time there was something like a terminal diagnosis on his life at the same time he said um, uh, my life's a mess I'm uh, going up for attempted murder charges and so forth you know, just some minor little issues in life and, and, uh, and I said well I don't know how to help you it's a good thing to say I don't know how to help you but I know somebody <laughs> that's another good thing to say I know somebody his name's Jesus and, uh, and so he asked Jesus into his life and he fell down under the power of God and when he got up he's a different man to the one that walked down there. Literally, God has just filled him with love. He's, he's uh, uh, empowered him and now deploying this warrior, uh, this uh, uh, mano, uh, te atua around the nation, around the world actually, and using the gift that God has given him as a Māori, or as a, a son of God, a matakiti, to be able to see into the spirit and to break chains of darkness and yokes, generation of jokes. And God is using him and a wonderful wife, Lei, to turn the psychiatric world in this nation upside down in a way that's never been seen before. And it's coming through, not in the little banners waving this and hallelujah, praise the Lord, and I love the name of Jesus, but you've got to be a stealth. And he's going in through our taha Māori, and he's casting out demons, all right, but they're in the name of a God you might not have heard of, Ihu Karaiti, under a spirit called Tawairua Tapu. And God is using him marvelously. And Lay, well, if you've, ever, if you've never heard an angel, just listen to her sing. And you'll hear an angel. You'll hear how angels sound like. And she's got an incredible anointing on her, an incredible, uh, not just singing. She also has got a, a prophetic 
uh, matakiti gift on her to see into people's lives, hearts, but to see from the past to the front to bring them together as well. And uh, we're so proud of Winnemar and Lay. They're our son and daughter, even though he's older than me. <laughs> but it doesn't matter. They're like our kids because we have known them when they couldn't budget 20 cents together. We have known them when they had nearly killed each other over a pencil. <laughs> We have known them and all sorts of things, but they have pursued Ihu. And in their journey of following Jesus, all that stuff has fallen off, mama has fallen off, and the greatness of who they are in Christ has risen through them. So I just want to honor you, Widomu and Lay again, to Mickey. And um, Alfred and Moko, I've only, well, I've known about these guys for ages, but I've met them in the last 12 months really on a deeper basis, and um, many of you already know Alfred and Muka and their amazing ministry, uh, not just in government, but outside of government, with the people. He tangata, he tangata, he tangata. He's known and loved by the people, because there's mana, and mana will lift you up. You won't lift yourself up, but if you have mana, it will lift you up. And uh, I just honor the mana that is on you both, that has lifted you up and is lifting you higher and higher in this nation uh, because you're already lifted up in a high place in heaven, seated with him in heavenly places. But that's going to manifest here in this whenua as God continues over the next, three, three, next few years, the lifting up. So I want to honor you, Alfred and Mocha. And just been, it's just so great to have you here today. We're going to have a cry together later on so we can really catch up. Uh, where's my notes? Oh, there they go. I've got another T-shirt here because I get sweaty, eh? So uh, if I get sweaty, I've got to change my clothes. Eh? Sure. Hey? What? Hope not. Um, by the way, you're going to see this uh, tag. I sh you say, where'd you get your bags? Remember Billy T? Where'd you get your bag? Ooh, I stole it, eh? <laughs> Where'd you get your shirt? Ooh, I stole a day from Huffer. <laughs> so I still got the tag. I didn't get the tag off in time, so please. God uses even thieves. <laughs> Somebody that, what the heck? No. How to get the good stuff nowadays? I buy this shirt, they don't take the tag off. That's my story. <laughs> anyway, if you've got a, a, a thingy that can take the tag off, Katie Pye. But you're not allowed to rip the shirt, Jess said. Don't rip the shirt. So if you've got a thing that can take this tag off, can't be bothered going back to the flipping mall. <laughs> Auckland, eh? It doesn't happen in Gazi. <laughs> no, because we don't have these. No. <laughs> Couple of things, but this, this is a, a, a precursor before that. Deuteronomy 28, 1 says, if you walk in my ways, and he's talking to the people of God, the Hebrews at that time, but you know that the Hebrews, the promises to the Hebrew nation through Jesus Christ now, all those promises that were made to the Hebrew race are now made through Jesus Christ to those who are believers in Christ Jesus to the human race. You got that? You understand that, that uh, sort of um, synergy and syn uh, it's synchronized and synonymous. The promises to Israel are now the promises to, of God to us, God's people. And he said to God's people, as the judgments were coming into Egypt, and I will lift you high above all the nations of the earth. And all the nations of the earth are troubled right now. And they're shaking, because God's shaking the earth and the heavens. To show that there's only one kingdom that cannot be shaken, and that's the kingdom you're part of under the King Itaka or Hikuraiti under Jesus Christ. And he said, I will lift you high above all the nations. And I believe he means all the troubled nations. And I believe this is in context of this time in history because of the troubled nations of the earth. He's saying to you as part of the, well, you're a part of the nation too. I'm a, I'm a part of the nation of Aotearoa, New Zealand. Uh, and that's great. I'm proud to be that. But I'm part of another nation, and so are you. 1 Peter 2.9, I think it is, where it says we are holy nation, uh, we are royal priesthood, uh, something, something, and a holy nation. So we are a holy nation. So you belong to the nation of God. And that nation is made up of all races and, and, and creeds and peoples across the face of the earth. Billions of us, but we're the body of Christ, but we're also referred to as a, as a holy nation, the nation of God, and the government is on his shoulders. So you're tracking with me? So you are part of this nation, the holy nation. What does it look like? I believe it's going to look like this. 
that God's about to lift you and I high above the troubled nations of the earth right now. I believe there's going to be a governance upon God's people, the holy nation, that's not going to trouble the COVID-19 nations, not going to trouble the nations of the earth who are freaking out in fear of what's going to happen next. We are part of a nation that doesn't freak out because we have our roots, our Turanga Waiwai is in who Jesus created us to be. Our destiny is determined by Him, not by the White House or the Kremlin or Beijing, not by COVID-19 or who. It's determined by God before you were born, I knew you. And before you come out of your mother's Puku, I have deigned you, set you apart as a prophet to the nations. My plan for you is for good, not evil, to give you a hope and a future. And Jesus said he appeared to destroy all the works of the devil. He didn't create us to submit to the works of the devil, which is sickness and disease and corruption and, and all that rubbish. And I believe that where it says, Arise and shine, and the light has come, and the glory of the Lord is seen upon you. For the nations are in, for the night there is darkness on the land and gross darkness on the peoples. But you will rise, and his glory will be seen to be upon you, and kings will come to the brightness of your rising. So I personally believe that, that if you're a part, if you're born again, you're a Christian, you're a part of this holy nation, you need to understand what are your citizen rights of that holy nation. You need to get in your Bible. Stop being so lazy and just taking little Facebook snacks and begin to feed on the bread of life. The real one of God, eat to get it into your white world. Understand your uh, citizen rights as a, whole, holy, as a citizen of the holy nation. Because I will lift you high above all the nations. So that means in the Hebrew context back in history, you see when the judgments came upon Egypt, which is symbolic of the world. And all across the world, you see those judgments of pestilence and dust and blood and all this rubbish was happening. But the Hebrews were protected all through that time because God said, I will lift you high above all the nations. And I believe in this time in history that God's protection is on you. He has given provision for protection and provision for us. And as the Hebrews put the blood on the doorpost of their house, when the angel of death and destruction came across Egypt, God says, when I see the blood, I will pass over. And I believe through the blood of Jesus Christ, we, the holy nation of God, are lifted high above the effects, the ripple effects of COVID-19 and so forth. I don't believe we have to put up the narrative of what the governments are saying and what the politicians are saying and what who is saying. I believe we've got to listen to what God's report is, whose report will we believe. And I believe God's report is defined by who we think we are. <laughs> and so I want to encourage you, start to uh, see who you are. Agree with God. See, agree. Agree with God, uh, Job 22, 21. Agree with God and be at peace. And great good will come to you. If you don't agree with God, you're going to be agreeing with what the world and the devil says about you. Agree with God, number three. Two. Number three, then decree. You shall decree a thing, it shall be established. So when COVID hit, before it hit, I had a dream. And in the dream, Jesus came to me and he gave me communion. And he gave me his, his wine and he said, take this. There's no sin in my blood. And I took it. He said, take this bread. There's no, uh, there's no disease in my, in my body. I took it. And he said, what's coming on the world is two waves. The first wave will be a wave of fear. That will be the first wave. And said another wave is going to come. It's going to be a wave, a tsunami of depression. Because humans are going to, billions will find that their fortunes amassed over centuries has gone just like that. And therefore, the hope is taken out of them because they know if they try to amass it again, it can just go like that. And he said it's going to depress, it's depressing human being, humanity. And he says, when you see the tsunami of depression sweeping across the gross darkness on the people, it is your turn to rise and shine. Actually, you don't have to rise, just shine. Just be who you are. And do not worry because they are sinking because they're looking at the fear. And Jesus has caught us, look to what he's doing. And begin to, so we've been decreeing over Gisman. No COVID. We deny you access in Jesus' name. That's the authority he gives us in Luke 10, 19. Uh, we're decreeing new businesses, new opportunities, new jobs, new projects, uh, uh, health, financial breakthroughs, and it's happening. 
And it was just in the news the other day that Gisborne is the highest in the economy in the nation, highest region, the economy in the nation. Oh, but the ripple effects, what, what? We are defined by who God says we are. What's God, what is God's will for us? It's simple. It's just look into heaven, Matthew 16. Thy kingdom come and my will, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. God's will for us through COVID is what heaven's will is. That's what heaven's will. How would we be getting on in heaven? Oh, we're under the weight of what's going on in the world. But we're a different nation. We're the holy nation lifted high above all the nations of the earth. So begin to decree what the heaven's will <clears throat> excuse me, is for your, for your marriage, for your life, for your health, for your business, for the church. It's time to rise and shine, not time to bury ourselves. Woe is me. This is war. And there's only one weapon. It's the word of God. It is written. Amen. So there you go. That's for free. <laughs> this is such an important message. This one right here. It, it will determine uh, your rise or defeat in these coming years. It's going to determine where you are part of that nation, whether it's just an academic theory or whether it's a reality in your life. I live by this. I will die by this. Life and death is in him. Our times are in his hand, and it's his truth that frees us from what the lies of this world, the lies of the devil, and the lies of my own mind that try to tell me. Put up the first PowerPoint, please, bro. <clears throat> and let's uh, read it together. Speak it out together. We destroy every argument and lying imagination that exalts itself against the knowledge of God for you and take every thought captive to obey Christ that is God's word or his knowledge about you. Now, I've added some of my words so it's not straight out of Scripture, but that's okay. And so there, God has there's two things I want to talk about. Reference point and the knowledge of God for your life. Do you know the knowledge of God? What is the knowledge of God for your life? And I don't mean in a general sense, oh, well, he loves me. And he gave his life for me. And that's good. It's a general knowledge. And that one day I'm going to go to heaven. I don't mean just the general knowledge of God, that he's a good God, he loves you, and that's all wonderful. I mean the knowledge of God for your life. Do you know what the knowledge of God? If you don't have knowledge of God, the prophet Hosea said, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. And you know, it's not lack of knowledge. There's so much knowledge of God available to us. So Hosea said, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Then he said, the reason they're destroyed wasn't because of lack of knowledge. He says, because they rejected the knowledge. The knowledge was there. There was no lack. The lack was that they rejected the knowledge. They wouldn't look into the knowledge of God for their lives. And he said, because you have rejected knowledge, I will reject you for being a priest before me forever. So the knowledge of God in this nation the real one, our vats are overflowing. There's so much knowledge of God for us, for your life, your marriage, for your health, for your finances. There's so many seminars and workshops and conferences and preaching every Sunday. We are fat. We don't have the anointing. We have the anointing because we're big, fat, spiritual pigs. We need too much. <laughs> and every Sunday, Christians are getting fat with the Word. And they get fat because when you don't exercise, you just get fat. When you don't apply, <laughs> you just get academic knowledge. Hey, I'm not growling. I'm not angry. So you've got to know the knowledge of God for your life. It's your responsibility, not mine, not your pastor's. So when it comes to your health, what's the knowledge of God for your health? And you get sick, oh, pastor, pray for me. That's good. Pull for the elders, keep the pie. But you've got to go beyond just what they think God's plan for you is through your sickness. You've got to have the knowledge of God's plan. And His plan's for good, not evil. By my wounds you are healed. I, don't, I lay no disease upon you. I'm your healer. You've got to have that knowledge for yourself. Come on. It's time to stop being lazy and start getting into the ribbon of the Word of God and just listening to the Spirit of God and beginning to get the knowledge of God because there are thoughts going to come, arguments come, and they're going to rise up in your mind from the devil against the knowledge of God. And if you don't even know what the knowledge is, they will take you captive. But if you know the knowledge of God, you learn to take those thoughts captive in Jesus' name. If you don't take uh, 
If you don't take these lying thoughts captive, they will take you captive. So the first thing is uh, the knowledge of God. <laughs> young men, young women, what's the knowledge of God through your studies? At school, what's the knowledge of God for you? For many your age, it's whatever Facebook's saying, or Instagram, or Spotify, or whatever. That's the knowledge. It's not even the knowledge of God that they run by that, and not just young people, other people <laughs> as well. It's whatever is happening in the government. Oh, what's the latest news? Oh, this is happening. That's, is that the knowledge of God for you? I've got to, God's got to, so you've got to have the knowledge of God. The knowledge of God. We'll get back to that. So this other point I want to make is reference point. What is a reference point? A reference point is something you look at. Oh, let me read you something that makes me sound intelligent. Reference point, a place, an object used for comparison to determine where one's position is in reference to it. Objects that are fixed relative to the earth. Would you put the second one up, please? A PowerPoint, such as a building, a tree, a sign, make a good reference point. Reference point. You've got to have a reference point. In Gizzi, we don't have many high hills. <clears throat> there's one hill called uh, Kaiti Hill. In Paris, there's uh, the Eiffel Tower, I guess. And if you ever get lost in Gisborne, which you won't, <laughs> but if you want to know whether you're, what side of the town you are, you just look for Kaiti Hill as a reference point. Oh, there I am. I'll just go this way. You've got to have a reference point because it gives you an understanding of where you are. It gives sort of a sense of direction in your life. Reference point. When uh, the Pākehā side me introduced myself, oh, kia ora, I'm Norm, uh, I'm from Amaru, or I'm a freezing worker. Well, I uh, introduced myself, hey, what's your name, oh, Norm, and what do you do? Ah, oh, freezing worker. And then I'm defined by my name and my occupation. When a Māori comes up, they do a pipiha. Hey, lay, would you just get up here and just do a quick pipiha? Pipiha? Yeah, 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 that's how we do it. We just roll with them. <laughs> we don't have notes. I got, I got some things. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, and that is, what did I just say? <laughs> I see. <laughs> the Hikurangi is my mountain. Because she's giving a reference point. Hikurangi is my mountain. It's the highest point in all of the East Coast. And the river that washes the feet of that mountain is the Waiapu. Uh, my people, my um, immediate people, our sub-tribe is named after our ancestor Tūwhaka Iriora, and our main tribe is named after um, Poro Rangi. Um, our tipuna, our ancestor is called Ngāti Poro. Oh, um, Gosh. Um, what else? Um, Kite Taho Toku Mama, a co Kiri Eke Te Hapu, co Te Fano Aapanui Te Iwi, um, He Uria Hau no Nga Fano Collier, uh, Boyd, Sterling, Pahuru, um, yes. Nikki, thanks, Randy. So what she gave us, hi, I'm Leslie, uh, I'm a clinical something. Ah, oh, that's your name and that's what we define you. Now, she shared the region, the geographical region, the location she came from, the mountain, the river, the hapu. So other Māoris, oh, hey, hey, are you connected to them? The, the iwi, then the Fano, the dad, the, hey, oh, you're connected into this whole papa, So there's a sense of identity that a Māori will speak from. They're speaking from a sense of identity. A tūranga waiwai. <clears throat> a place to stand with dignity. A sense of knowing who they are. And a, a sense of direction. Because we know where we came from. We know where we're going. And, <clears throat> and so it's a reference point to who a person is. And when you have that reference point, it, it does wonders for your identity. 
It's beautiful. And you're not defined in Māori, and you're not defined by what you do, but by who you are. And when we want to meet somebody, it's not just a sit down, a five minute meeting. What do you do? What have you achieved? What have you accomplished? And how much money do you have in the bank to meet them? That's nothing. It means nothing. We want to sit down and kia ora, kia ora, sit down. We want to smell you. <laughs> we'll have a kai. Let's have a kai. Bit of a kōrero, karakia. And, uh, and just to hear your wairua, your heart, your whānau, your tamariki, your children. Know who you are, not what you are, who you are. Because that's how Jesus does it. Whanaunga tanga, it's called. When Jesus gathered <clears throat> his warriors, he didn't gather them around a, a necessary, an objective, a plan, a goal. He gathered them around whanaunga tanga. Hey, Peter, no, my, 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 come and have a bread. Come and have a real one. Paul Bones here, bro? No, no, that's the Maori Peter. <laughs> but it was relationship. In fact, Jesus only did stuff out of his whanongatang with the Father. I only do what I see my Father do. I only speak what I hear him say. He didn't do it out just out of an objective, I must die on the cross. He knew he was going to do that, but he did it out of relationship. And he showed us how to operate out of relationship. Reference point. Who are you? Not just what do you do. Who are you? Now, I'm going to tap the angle difference. Reference point. <clears throat> Reference point. The reference point for Jesus was the will of the Father. And every day, the same reference point, but just different aspects of it. <clears throat> the reference point for Jesus was the knowledge of God the Father's will for him. That was his reference point. While he kept his eyes on his reference point, he went through hell, literally. On the cross, he cried out, My Father, my Father, <clears throat> why have you forsaken me? Even through that time of incredible separation from God and the darkness of hell surrounding him and death knocking on his door, he didn't, that didn't kill him. He gave up his life, his spirit for us. But his reference point through that, he had a reference point for the joy that is set before him. He endured the shame of the cross. He had reference point in everything he did in life. And if you don't have a reference point in the storm, the storm will be your reference point. In the context of what's happening in the earth right now, most billions of human beings, their reference point is COVID-19. Their reference point is economic collapse. Their reference point is the threat of war. Their reference point is all over the place. But for you and I, our reference point is to be the knowledge of God's plan for our life, not the knowledge of this world, not the knowledge of World Health Organization, not the knowledge of the government, the knowledge of God's will for your life. That's to be your reference point. And you've got to know this. It says that the enemy is going to try and rob, put vain imaginations in your mind. Going to try and lift up thoughts above that knowledge. You're useless. God's not going to be with you. No, you better get that fixed up. And you better get worried because stuff's happening. At the man, I take you captive to the obedience of Jesus. I do not have a spirit of fear, but a power of love and a sound mind. I'm strong and full of courage. I'm not afraid. I'm not dismayed. Because Lord God's with me wherever I go. That's the knowledge of God's plan for my life. I've dug into his, his real one. And it's my food. That's what I live on. That's the, my reference point through my life. It's the knowledge of his will, his plan. That's my reference point. Young men, young women. You've got to have that reference point because you are surrounded by young men and women who their reference point is how cool they look to that girl, how many muscles they got, or how cool the girl looks and what's her hair look like, does my bum look fat? That's their reference point. It's all over the place and it's dragging them down into destruction and depression and suicide and drugs and addictions. Because a reference point is who God says you are. It's not your muscles, even though you're pretty staunch. It's none of that. It's not your hair. It's not your body. It's not your looks. He loves you. Not what you do, but who you are. He says, you're my, you're my, you're my beautiful son. You're my beautiful daughter. I love you. I died for you. You don't need the affirmation of others. I affirm you. There's no one like you. I didn't make a photocopy of you. You are unique. You're mine. And I love you. 
in fact, God sees the best in you. Sometimes you're, God sees the worst in me, but he, he tends to look at the best instead. God knows the worst in me, about me, but he looks only for the, he only sees the best in me. Because he, he draws out the best because he made you in his image. And when he sees you, he sees your greatness. He sees your car, he sees your ihi, he sees who you really are. Not behind that mask, that fake mask, you know, that everyone's walking around with, oh, I'm so cool. And they go home, oh, I'm just so crap. Life is crap. Oh, I'm great, yeah, hi, selfie. It's all fake. You know what I'm talking about. It's all fake. Because their reference point is on how cool they look, not who they are. I want you to know you are awesome. There's no one like you. And as you rise and shine for Jesus, you will become a reference point for them. As you follow Jesus, you become a reference point that they will follow. You're leaders. You're not sheep. You're leaders. And you're part of our nation that God is raising up in this nation of Aotearoa. You're a nation, a new generation. And uh, so understand the knowledge of God's plan for your life. Get into your Bible. Listen to your teachers, your leaders. Listen to these messages. Do some studies. And, and just take responsibility of studying the Word of God to who you are. My mokapuna went down to uh, uh, Victoria last year. She wanted to be a lawyer. And she was determined. That was her reference point. I'm going to be a lawyer. I'm going to change the world. She says, Grand, I want to change the world. I want to be the second Catherine Coleman. So part of it was to be a lawyer. She went down there and she said, no, I don't want that. I want to be a teacher. So she's come back and she's going through training, teacher's training. But anyway, the thing is, um, uh, she had a reference point And she was a leader. For Jesus, she stood up for what God had called her to do, not what the world's calling her to do. And although it wasn't lawyer, but she just keeping a walking point, it was God's plan for my life. And uh, I just want to encourage you, she's part of the new generation, just like you fellas. That's why I want you to stay here. So reference point is very important. Uh, are you okay? The person next to you okay? They haven't gone to sleep? Just give them an elbow. Pinch them. <laughs> uh, okay, prophet. Thank you. So every believer on earth needs to a place of to value to need to put value on their reference point of the knowledge of God's plan for their life. So they're not swept away by the lies and the imagination of the devil's plan for their lives. Next PowerPoint, please. The knowledge of God to Adam and Eve was all good. One of the knowledges of God was don't eat of that tree. Or you'll die. That's the knowledge of God. But either any other tree, be fruitful, multiply, and extend the paradise of Eden across the whole earth. That was their co papa. That was their reference point was God, walk with God, and their co papa was to extend God's will, God's plan throughout the earth. The knowledge of God was their reference point until the devil came and whispered into ear, Did God really say? And so, the devil will whisper in your ear. Your fears will whisper in your ear. Your insecurity will whisper in your ear. Your bank account will whisper in your ear. <laughs> Does God really say he will rebuke the devourer from my vine? And that, as I keep tithing, that I'll have a blessing I cannot... Oh, did he really say? Well, yeah, he did. And that's how the, the, the lies come into the air of the first human beings to take them away from the reference point of the knowledge of God for their life. And understand the devil's still, in, he's still here. And he's still whispering in your ear, humanity's ear, to God really say. And Eve, if she had stuck to her guns and said yes, because she said the first thing, yeah, God said we will die. He said don't eat. First thought's always God, second thought's usually the devil. And when you hear God tell you something and you walk, don't walk in obedience to that, then you'll wait for the next thought, which will be a rational thought connected to your soul, connected to the underground. Oh, well, maybe I can rationalize that. Maybe he means this. And that's what she did. She rationalized. Maybe he means this. And, you know, the, the history of that. So don't be beguiled by the enemy. He's going to whisper lies against the knowledge of God for you. If you don't know the knowledge of God, you're in trouble. You're in trouble. But if you know Jesus... If you just got born again, you just know, met Jesus, Katie Pai, there are plenty here that got the knowledge of God's plan. They can help you. They can guide you through that, yeah? We can't just go through life, okay, sarah, sarah, and think, well, he loves me. When I die, I'm going to heaven. I think I've got crowns in heaven, and 
I think I've got a blue robe he's going to get in. Oh, it's been prophesied that he's going to do this and he's going to have more than a general airy fairy theory. You've got to have the knowledge of God. That's how Jesus lived. He had a reference point, the knowledge of God for his life. We must have a reference point. It's the holy nation of God. What is the knowledge of God for his holy nation? Well, better find out his knowledge first for us as individuals, as our, for our marriages, for our whanau, for our finances, for our health. We need to know this stuff because depression is, on, depression is here. And it's going to come in waves. And all these billions of humans, the tsunami of depression, guess what that is? We've been praying for this for decades and decades. This great revival, this great end time harvest. Do you realize what it is? Do you know why Jesus came? For the needs of the people, to release, heal the people, to deliver the people. And so when people are in need, that they cry out to God. The world has not been in need. This nation has not been in need. It's the land of candy floss. And you go to uh, Pakistan and India, that's need there where there's no social systems. There's no health care systems like we have here. There's no handouts on Thursday. You just get money in the hand and go and buy some kai and buy some, uh, and some dak and some booze. Over there, there's nothing. You die. And they have to know the knowledge of God that he loves them more than any man, any human, and that they're part of a holy nation that they rely on God. That's why they have so much more zeal. We see so many more miracles over there. That's one of the reasons. But they, their life and death is dependent upon their reference point of the knowledge of God. And if God does not deliver them, they say, oh, we're still not bowing down anyway. Many of our fun over there have been taken out and say, if God does not deliver us, even if he doesn't, we will not bow down to this world anymore. They are beautiful people. Now, I don't want us to get to that point. I, I like candy floss land. <laughs> I like my comforts. I like flushing toilets. I like driving my new Everest with radar cruise control and speak to city. Uh, where's the nearest KFC? <laughs> I like all this stuff. But I, I, I want what he wants more. I want for our nation something better than just materialism and prosperity and, and everybody's happy and not in need of God. So God's shaking it up. Suddenly, ugh, there's a need coming. So what is that coming, that tsunami of depression? It's the harvest! Lift your eyes. It's the harvest we've been praying for. Yeah, I think some churches are going to miss it. It's knocking on their door. It's right there in our communities. It's the harvest. It's white. Anyway, moving on very fast, coming to a close. Only one more hour. What is the knowledge of God's plan for your emotional well-being? What is the knowledge of God's plan for your physical well-being? What is the knowledge of God's plan for your marriage well-being? What is the knowledge of God for your present occupation, your financial situation? What is the knowledge of God's plan for your life? That's your reference point. Focus on the knowledge of God's plan for you. That's his reference point. It will take you above the storm. There was a man called Peter, and he was in a boat, and Jesus walking past. He thought he was a kihua, a spirit, a ghost. And so all the guys went, yeah, it's a ghost. And uh, they said, no, we think it's, it's, we think it's, we think it's Ihu. And so Peter says, hey, master, if that's you, tell me to come. So Jesus said, ah, kia ora, Peter. No, my, how do you my? <laughs> He's a Maori Jesus, this fella. <laughs> he had a quarter of a wire. And, and so Peter steps out. He says to the fellas, later. And he steps out. No, he did not make him that part up. <laughs> but he walked on the water. Who knows you can't walk on water? It's a fact. Physically impossible. It's against the laws of gravity and rationale and, and relativity. You can't physically walk on water. It's a fact. I want to tell you, truth always overrides facts. You can have a diagnosis from the doctor, but when the truth invades that, it overturns the facts. It overturns the facts. I was called to the hospital. This woman was dying. She was hooked up to the life support machine. She had a brain hemorrhage. All the whanau were gathered. We got a nurse in our, in, our, in, our ch in our church, and she told me later on, she says, she's dead, she's gone. There's no coming back from this one. And so she's, all the whanau is in the A&E group, crying, and I, and, I, and I spoke to her, a wairua. She's unconscious, she's got this monitor on her, oxygen mask and all that. I said, you can hear me, your spirit can hear me, 
Your mukul want you back here. Get back here. Ask Jesus. Let me come back. She's not a Christian. And the Lord said to me, she said, now, he said to me, now leave. You've done what I called you, now leave. So me and Jess was there, and we, we walked out there. We got to about here from, the, from where she was lying behind the curtain. And we heard, ah! And I turned around, and her ex-husband was standing up against the wall like he'd seen a ghost. He's, he's gray. He's like, so I poked my head around the corner, and she had awakened, ripped off her oxygen mask, ripped off those, the, the, you know, whatever she's plugged into, the machine's going, blah, 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 blah. The nurses are coming out, and she's saying, what am I doing here? What am I doing here? Let's get back into bed. You've just had a stroke. You're di- you'll die. She's back working and countdown totally healed. Because the facts said, you have a hemorrhage. The fact says you have a brain. Bleed. These are facts, medical facts, incurable facts. But when you reach out and touch the truth, because he's called the way, the truth, and the life. Truth overrides facts every time. So Peter's walking on the water and he's looking at truth. He's looking at the one who's called truth. He, he said, come. The knowledge of God from in that context was walk. Peter, come and walk toward me. And as he kept his reference point on who Jesus was at that point in time for his life, Jesus allowed him to walk upon the impossibilities of life. And as you keep, as we keep our eyes on the reference point of his, the knowledge of his will for our lives, as his people, he's going to allow us to walk on what the world says is impossible. Walk above COVID, walk above depression, walk above a financial collapse. We are going to become more prosperous, more healthier, more wiser, more businesses, new opportunities to bring healing to our people, to our world. It's not just about us. Look at us. We're up here and you're the dirty rascal. It's us up here and saying, no, my honey, my, let's start rescue our whanau. Let's start rescue our nation and bring them in to that holy nation through Jesus Christ. That's the call. If we don't have our eyes on the reference point, we can't help rescue them. And so Peter's going, whoo! And all the other 11 fellas in the boat are going, Peter, you mug, get back here. You can't do that. And they're probably thinking, you're showing us up, man. <laughs> One out of 12 got out of the boat. I think that's the ratio of activists. There's always one out of 12 that'll go where others won't go. Peter was that one that was, he blew it a few times. He tripped up, but he just had to keep going up, had to go. And God used him to do stuff that others had never done before. Too busy thinking about it, rationalizing. Mm, I don't know. First thought's always God. Come, get out and have a go. Second thought is, nah, mm, laws of gravity, HTO, mm, body mass, mm, bones. Mm. Oh, well, stay in sync. <laughs> Stay on your boat, stay in your comfort. You might be still be in Christ, but you won't be in the destiny you were called to. You won't be doing the things he called you to do. Cometh the hour, cometh the man. This is our time in history. It's time to rise and shine and let the glory of the Lord be seen reflected off us. Because darkness is on old Teoroa and gross darkness is on our people. But when we shine, that even kings are going to be brought to our bride. We don't have mana even with the government. We don't even mana with each other's churches. But God wants to restore his mana back on his church, not ours. So there's a reference point at the moment going on in this nation where he's calling the heads of his house to humility and then unity. It take a lot of humility. <laughs> but until there's unity in the head, it won't flow down into the body. It's just a basic principle. And, you, and I, I'm, I know many of the body, and I go through the mutu, and I hear the cry of God's people. When are the leaders going to get together in unity like we have here? And God's doing something in the leadership of this nation, and the apostles and prophets of this nation. Many of them are most in Mapagia. But God says, no, that's not right. We've got to get our Maori ones up there too. We've got to get our Maori apostles and prophets, and our Pacifica and our Asia. But first, Māori and Pākehā have to be put back on the, uh, 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 the, the leadership structure of the house of God, of Aotearoa. It has to. You don't get a chocolate cake without cocoa. You don't. You can have your eggs and your sugar. You can have your, uh, 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 your milk and your water. You can whisk it. Whoop, it's, a, it's a dud. It's fake. 
You've got to put some cocoa in, bro. That's a chocolate coke. And the recipe of God for his church is, he said, and the, the foundation of the church is not Jesus. He's the foundation of our faith. No other name may we be saved. The foundation of the church is the apostle and the prophet, Jesus Christ being the cornerstone. The apostles and the prophets, first and foremost, are Maori. Because the first great national revival has already been. We're waiting for the second one, in case you missed that. The first great national revival happened after 1828, right up to 1840. Where at least 60% of Māori had turned to the Lord, 60% of the population of a nation turned to Jesus. And that revival amongst Māori was spread by Māori, not by the missionaries not imposed upon us, but we spread among our own people because we were apostles. We had apostles, Māori apostles and prophets. And then as the settler church came, God bless the settlers. As they came, the settler church grew bigger and bigger because of virtue of the population and the more and more white faces and less and less brown faces, more and more white leaders, less and less Maori leaders until the little Maori apostles and prophets are put down there as little deacons and little errand boys. Uh, not being facetious, it's just reality. And the settler church system is, being, is ruling now. That's why you don't see many Maori in a lot of churches because it's a system. And God's got another system. He says, nah, when the brethren dwell together in unity, and he says, not just Pākehā apostles and prophets, it's Māori apostles and prophets as well, where we stand on equal footing, and not one above the other, but equal footing on the rock Christ Jesus under the spirit of kotahitanga, the oneness, the unity. And then the river of this message of kotahitanga will go throughout all of the earth. And when that bicultural uh, kotahitanga comes, then multicultural kotahitanga comes, and all our Pacifica walkers get up there, and all our Asian, and we have a message for the nations of the earth of kotahitanga. Because the nations are in turmoil and darkness is upon them. And so Jesus, Peter, he's on the water getting too close here. As he's looking, he keeps his eyes on the knowledge of God. That's his reference point. And then he hears a whisper in his ear. A vain imagination. A thought rises up. It's pretty windy down here. There's some waves down here. Shut up. Jesus. Oh, what's that? I'm getting wet. Ah, ah, water. <laughs> Wind. Storm. Ah, Jesus, help. Peter, keep your eyes on the reference point of my, the knowledge of God for your life. If you take your eyes off the knowledge of God for your life, you're going to look at your sickness, your bank account, your marriage. Your, you start looking at that stuff, son. You're gone, your history. <sighs> Keep your eyes on Jesus, young people. It's sad and it's hard and it's tragedy. Young people are taking their lives. And it's easy to look at them and say, well, my life's not much better. I might as well do it. No, don't look at those waves. Don't look at those storms because they're designed to suck you up. Jesus says, lift your eyes. Look at what I say about your life. Because I will lift you above suicide. I will lift you above depression. I will lift you above addiction. I will lift you above the gangs. I have a plan for you. Way better than what this world's trying to find out. So in closing, there's so much more that we'll just leave it there. Next time doubts rise about God's plan for you, know who's whispering in your head. Put up the next one, please, bro. Thank you. <coughs> Is that the last PowerPoint? I oh, know. Okay. Okay. So that, that's what's flying around the atmosphere. This, you watch these cars as you come out today in the car park. You, come, you see cars driving. That's what's going on in their minds. In fact, that's what's going on in some minds right here, this place. Because <coughs> they don't have a reference point. Because Jesus is a reference point. He is the author and the finisher of our lives. You, we know that. They don't. I don't. I don't know what the suicide stats are, but I imagine they're pretty high at the moment. Depression's high, all-time high. And modern psychology and psychiatry and medication and social uh, uh, and, and uh, medicine is not helping. They're just getting medicated to dull the pain, but it's not freeing them. This bro here, Fudu Moon Lay, the couple that God's using to free them. But we're, we're using real language. 
Now, it's in the name of Jesus. Come here, we'll have a little prayer. And everything will be all wonderful. Come on. Say this prayer, Jesus. Thank you. Great are you within me. Amen. Everything's all good now. Okay. But I still don't have a job. I still got this lump on my leg. The, you've got to give them more than just this uh, platitudes. And you've got to be real. You've got to give them uffy. The reference point is not what you can do, but who are you? Is we've got to uffy these people. Just like you did this morning. It's so beautiful. Uffy the people. Not just tokenism on a Sunday. Pitch that they come here next Sunday, all the ones that, oh, I'm whanau, I'm not manuhere anymore, I'm tanga to whenawa. And, and you got hugged by somebody here, and, and they come in next Sunday through that door, and the, and the one that hugged them, and they, they go to say hello, but that one just turns their back, and imagine mm. that. I mean, that's what the world does. That's what the world does. Not us, eh? Hey? Our reference point is him. Aroha kete hatua, love for God first, translated by aroha kete tangata, which is expressed by our love one for another. And that's why we do this in the house. Because he loved us before we loved him. We love others before they even know us. Reference point, Jesus. Father, I just thank you for your presence here. Father, I want you to, to, to lead you in this prayer. Would you repeat after me? Lord Jesus, I repent of neglecting the knowledge of God of either being too lazy or too distracted from placing value on the reference point of your word and your will for my life. Forgive me, Jesus, from drinking from other people's wells instead of my own. Help me now Eat your bread, drink your spirit to nourish myself in the knowledge of your word for my life. Help me, Jesus, make you, the knowledge of your will, my reference point from this moment on. Thank you, Jesus. I renounce you, Satan. Your lies, your imaginations, even your evidence, I renounce. And Jesus, reference point, my life, I accept your verdict now. I take back my peace. I take back my joy. The joy of the Lord is not through outward evidence. The joy of the Lord is my strength. The joy of you. Not externals. You are my joy. And you are my strength. I take it back now. Mm -mm. I take back your will for my life, my health. If you're sick, you've got pain in your body, put your hand on your heart or put your hand where the, where the pain is or where the lump is or where the, if it's appropriate. If not, just put your hand on your heart. Mm. You may not, you might find this hard to believe, but I have a diagnosis for you that is in opposition to the doctor's diagnosis. Some people say, we can't say that it's because they don't know the knowledge of God's word for you. Don't even know the general knowledge, let alone the... And his diagnosis says, I healed you before you came into this room. Psalm 103, verse 4, 3, 2. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits, who forgives all my sins and heals all, not some, all my diseases. The moment Jesus forgave your sin, your disease was healed. 
It's synonymous. When he takes your sin, he takes your disease because the root cause of sickness, disease, is rooted in sin, generally speaking. It doesn't mean if you had a sickness, it's because you were a bad person. It means Adam and Eve's sin. You're contaminated. We're all contaminated with that sin. And as a result of that sin, that condition of the human race, it attracts sickness and disease. Simple as that. But when Jesus took away your sin, when, when he canceled the debt of your sin, he removed your prison sentence of sickness. If you're in jail because you, you, you owed a debt and uh, you haven't paid it, then you go to jail. But if someone pays your debt off, you don't stay in prison and say, oh, thank God, I'm so grateful you paid the debt off. You paid off the debt. Thank you. I'm so glad I, that you paid the debt off. He said, well, what are you doing still in prison? You're only in prison because of the debt. But when, when the debt's been removed, the prison sentence, the doors are open. <laughs> the debt of sin Jesus took your debt of sin and the prison door, curse of sickness, that you might know the Son of Man has power on earth to forgive sin. Pick up your bed and walk. Two things. Your, your debt's been removed. Your prison of sickness is gone. And sometimes it takes people, you mean I can just walk out? Yeah. <laughs> oh, Jesus, help me. <laughs> There's no key in that door of sickness. Just push it. Just push it. And quote 1 Peter 2.24 as you do, that you bore my sin in your own body on the tree, and I'm dead to sin and alive to righteousness, and by your wounds I am healed. That's the knowledge of God for you. you get that in your wairua, because your wairua already believes it. It's just your head is having trouble with it. Get out of your head and get into your spirit. Okay, so that sickness, Father, right now, thank you, it's going. Hey, I thank you, Lord, if you're going to forgive a sin, Anytime, anywhere, any place, and you'll heal a sickness. Anytime, anywhere, any place. It may be a recovery over a period of time. <clears throat> it may be instantaneous. But you can't lie, Jesus. The devil can't tell the truth, and you can't tell a lie. And the devil says you're not going to get healed. You don't deserve it. But Jesus, you say, by my wounds you are healed. It's not by any works of righteousness that you have done. It's not according to, 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 to what we have done. It's according to His mercy and His grace. Right now, put your hand on that on your heart. Just keep your hand on that place. Holy Spirit, why do a tapu no my harimai? Why do a tapu no my harimai? Ihu, I honor your authority in this house. I honor you are our Turanga Waiwai, Lord. You are our authority that we stand on. Why do a tapu? You are the power. You are the power. Let the authority and the power of the Lord Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit expressed by the love of the Father. Now, those of you who put your hand there, now, if you couldn't move your body without pain, if you couldn't lift your leg, or stand, do something you couldn't do. Come on, get out of your seat right now. Do something. Faith is an action. Faith is not just a mental condition. It's an action. If there's something in your body that wasn't, that, if you had a lump, just feel it now. Hit yourself in the guts if you had pain. Come on, check it out. Jesus said to the cripple, pick your bed up and walk. He didn't say you're healed. He said, pick your bed up and walk. He didn't say you're healed. He says, do something. Do an act of faith. And by that act of faith, the power of God fell. Ten lepers came. Jesus didn't say you're healed. Do something. Show yourself to the priest. So as they did that act of faith, on the way, the power of God fell and they said, we're cleansed. you got to do something. So everybody, please get up, stand up. Even if you're not sick, if you've got fear about finances, fear about your marriage, fear about your health, fear about this or that, flip it, heck. See God's plan. Your bank account's full. you got a new job. Yeah, your redundancy, forget it. you got new opportunities. There's new markets opening up for you. That's breakthrough. Get the knowledge of God as a reference point for what you're going through right now. Sickness, you're healed. How many feel that healing right now? How many know you're doing something and that's gone? Just lift your hand, wave your hand. Thank you, Holy. <gasps> let the fragrance of the Holy Spirit fill this house. In Jesus' name, Father, let this, it's your word, Lord. Help your Father. Is that good? Is that good? Feel better? <laughs> what? What was wrong with you, darling? So, uh, sorry, you had a what? A sprained ankle? For how long? Um, since Tuesday. Since Tuesday? Uh, what couldn't you do before? Jump on it. Can, can you come up here and jump on it? 
Just come up here. Come on, darling. Oh, you're a dancer? Well, I'm a dancer too. Gee, I can tell we've got the same physique. <laughs> can, can you jump on it? Does it not hurt? You couldn't do that before? See, this is the knowledge of God's plan for her. And I'm helping un- help her understand it, but you're going to have to dig deep to get it for other areas of her life. So for you, Jesus already healed you. That's my reference point. I'm not trying to get you healed. He already did it. I just got to get you to try to believe it. What's your name, darling? Amy. Amy. Father, just thank you for Amy. We thank you for your blessing upon this daughter who will dance for you, who will please the King of Kings, who will be, Lord, uh, when you dance, honey, you're prophesying. So when you just keep your mind on, Jesus, I'm going to do the best for you. I don't know what sort of dance you do. But when you do it for the best for Jesus, like that, <laughs> uh, uh, you're going to, God's going to be speaking to people and some people are going to cry because it's so beautiful because God's Spirit is touching them through the expression of your worship for God. Worship for God is not just singing songs in church. Worship is God is giving Him your best whether you're working at the KFC or whether you're dancing on, on the platform. That's worship. And when you worship God, you leak and you contaminate people with His goodness. That's you, Amy. Okay, prophet. Don't forget your uh, your cloths, otherwise I'll steal them and put them in the, uh, uh, you know. Please stay standing. Oh, wasn't that awesome? I want to, um, there's a couple of things I want to do while we're standing. Um, first off, I want to uh, ask that if you'd like to just bring a love offering to honour um, these, uh, to honour uh, Apostle Norm. Please just sort it out at the back. I'm, I'm so grateful for people who, you, we don't have to pressure you to do it. So many people are so generous. You've been generous toward Apostle Mike Connell. And I just ask that as you leave the auditorium this morning, that you just bring a love offering and just um, give it there. I believe the way that we treat our visiting ministries financially has a direct bearing upon the, um, the spiritual blessing upon this church. And so please, just uh, you just let the Lord lead you in that, um, but let's be generous toward Him. I wanna do something uh, before we finish, and that is if you're here this morning and you have never given your life to Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, I want to meet you up the front here in a few moments and I'll lead you in a prayer. I promise you that I will not embarrass you in any way. We will pray with you out loud, but this is your moment to say, Jesus, I just ask you to forgive me of all sin. I receive you into my life and I become a child of God. I tell you, as I said earlier, anyone that is in Christ, the Bible says, is a new creation. Old things have passed away and all things have become new. I can tell you that instant change is only (coughs) a prayer away. And if you're here this morning, even if you're the only person, don't be looking around saying, well, I don't know, I'm not too shy to come up the front. That's dumb. You don't need to be shy. You just need to come. And right now, I just invite anybody that is here today that would say, I want to become a Christian. I want to ask Jesus to come into my life. I want to have my sins forgiven. I want to just invite you right now just to come out of your seat from wherever you are and come and stand up the front. Someone will stand with you, but come and meet me up here. Is there anybody? You come. Don't be looking around to see if anyone else is coming. This is your moment. You say, man, you don't make it easy. Well, we're not meant to make it easy. The Bible says you confess him before um, people. God will confess you in heaven. And so, you know, trying to make it easy is not what this is about. This is about you saying yes to Jesus. If you want to come and give your life to Christ, I invite you to step out of your seat right now and come to the front. Is there anybody? Is there anybody? God wants to meet with you today. Thank you, Jesus. Just one more half minute. Wonderful. I forgot I meant to do this myself. Um, there are many more, and you've listened to the second thought. The first thoughts that you know to come down. That's your wairua, not your rationale, not your soul. 
And if, if you follow your wairua, your spirit, it'll lead into it, make your crooked path straight. And you've listened to the second thought and you're disqualifying yourself. That's a lie too. No, you're not disqualified. Just get back into the first. And just come on down. No my hurry my. Come on, don't let your circumstance hold you back. Don't let that fear. Come on. Me and Jess, we've been married 41 years. We're about to divorce, actually. We said, we'll give you a go, Jesus. We said to each other, Lord, uh, if, if you can't heal us, we said to each other, well, we'll just divorce. But we'll give God a go. Let's give God a go. Hey, bro, how are you? <laughs> As there's others, come on. It, 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 you, 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 rededication, that's what I hear, the word rededicate. There's a rededication of the temple. The temple's meant to be filled with God's glory, God's peace, God's health, God's wholeness. And you're empty. You know you're empty. And there's, so you know, I'm not going to drag you up or try and push you up. I'm just trying to help you. The door is open. No, my, hurry, my. Come on down. Come on quickly. Come on. You're just going to go home and you're going to continue to worry about that, that incident you've had. You're going to continue to worry about it. It's never going to get better. You say, well, when I'm good enough, you're never going to be good enough. Come on, I want to invite you. No, my hurry, my. Come all the way from Gisborne. God sent me here just to help rescue you. Just to help, not rescue you, to, come on. Ask the person next to you, do you need to go down? I don't do that very often. Would you ask the person next to you, do you need to go down there? Come on. This could be your last day on earth. Make sure I don't lose anyone. Anyone? Anyone? Do you need to go down there, bro? You're good? You're good? Okay. Thanks. Fantastic. Awesome. Awesome. Just uh, everybody just repeat after me and you repeat this. Lord Jesus, I come today and ask you now to forgive me of all sin. I receive now you into my life as I confess you, Jesus, as my Lord and Saviour. I receive now your Holy Spirit into my spirit. Thank you, Jesus. I am now a child of God, and I am a member of the family of God. Now touch him in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. Well, absolutely awesome. Don't forget tonight we have um, our church from uh, South Auckland. They're going to be doing the music, Sounds of Praise. I preached for them uh, about six or eight weeks ago. They are absolutely brilliant. They've got a whole lot of items they're going to do. So uh, look, we, uh, the children, there's a program out the back at night times. So you come tonight, you'll have, I believe, just an incredible time. If nothing else, it'll be entertaining. But even more than that, the power of God is going to move. Lives are going to change. People are going to come to Christ and you are going to be mightily blessed. God bless you. We'll see you six o'clock tonight.